Hey everyone, so today we're fishing at Ross Lake in the Skagit Valley uh, Provincial Park. And uh, as you can see, it's a beautiful setting we have here. Nice and calm today, it's kind of overcast, not really sunny, so it does, it's not going to get too hot. We're going to be targeting several different species. We're going to go for bull trout, uh, brook, uh, eastern brook trout, and rainbow trout. And uh, we're going to be using both spin tackle and fly fishing rods. So let's uh, get the boats down here and we'll talk some more when we get out there. Okay, so we are at our sweet fishing spot now. Uh, I've fished here before in the past and uh, caught lots of fish here. So I'm going to try this out first. Uh, like I said earlier, we're going to be using both spinning outfit and fly fishing outfit. Uh, to start out with, I'll be using um, a spinning tackle setup. So this is the ultra light spinning setup. Um, it's rated two to six pound test. Uh, we've got a little spinning reel on it. So this is a Shimano Stratic CI4 Plus 1000, which is the smallest model. It's a really, really nice reel, nice and light, and it can handle pretty big fish with it. I just got this a few months ago and I've been pretty impressed by it. So the reel itself is spooled with 10 pound test Maxima braided line. Um, in the past, I've always been a big fan of uh, mono line, monofilament line, uh, Maxima Ultra Green. Uh, six pound, eight pound, that's what I usually put on it. But this braided line has been pretty impressive. Um, I really like it after I start using it. Um, it's thinner, it's stronger, and uh, which allows you to cast pretty far and handle some pretty big fish at the same time. So at the end of the braided line, uh, what I do is I tie a roughly around six foot long um, fluorocarbon fishing line on it, just so that the fish can't really see the line. So this is six pound test fluorocarbon. And um, at the end of the line, at the end of the leader, that's where you have the, your fishing lure on it. So today we're going to be using these uh, Gibbs Delta Tackle Croc spoons. This is a 1 8 ounce spoon, so it's roughly around just one inch long, maybe a little longer. Um, and the reason we're using these is that there are lots of red side shiners in the water. And uh, if you go closer in the shallow, you can see them swimming around. They're all roughly around this big. And uh, these bull trout, and even rainbow trout are feeding on these red side shiners. And so by using this, you're imitating what they're feeding on. And uh, that's how we usually get those big trout and char. Uh, so we're gonna try that. I'll show you some of the different lures that we use, different patterns that we use um, in this model a bit later on. But for now, uh, Nina's gonna take over the fishing rod. I'm gonna be taking over the fishing camera because I've done this quite a few times. She hasn't really fished this here yet. Uh, so I'll give her a chance to catch one. And uh, maybe later on, if she catches a few, uh, if we're lucky enough, she catches a few, I'll get out of the uh, fly fishing rod and try that out. But uh, so let's get get going. And I saw a couple of fish swimming by when we anchored, so I'm pretty excited. Hopefully, we get one. Rodney promised me fish right away. Well, last time we caught the first five <clears throat> casts, we got fish on, on every cast. So, how many was that? Five? Four. Four. Nope. Snack. Nah. Hook something. The wrong thing. Oh, 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 right there, right there. They're all right there. See a whole bunch of them right there. If you cast really, okay, and cast that way. Yeah, I see him. Yeah. Hmm. 
And there's a fight up on him. But it's still there. Yeah, I know. Did it sit in there? Yeah. Did it sit in there? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna flow in any second now. There's a brook trout. Yeah. Oh, I had one falling a little bit. Yeah. Oh, there's so many. What are they doing? So Neo just sat down to eat some food after being, being fed up with all the fish swimming around, not biting her lure, and I thought, well, put down the camera and do a few casts. What do you know? There's a fish on here. So we've been seeing a whole bunch of fish, fish uh, swimming around right in front of us um, when we moved the boat around, and I thought this fish might be too spooked to bite because, you know, the water's quite clear. Like, Clearly they have seen all shadows moving by. Um, but actually this fish didn't take very long to, to hook. Um, I think it just comes down to kind of retrieve speed of the spoon to get it right. Um, that will trigger bites. I think this is a bull trout, just the way it's fighting. It's been on for quite a while. As you can see, the, the ultralight spinning tackle, the rod is just really bent, but it's still strong enough to handle the fish because there's no current in the lake if you're fishing a river catching a fish that size that might be a different story um, because the fish can utilize that current to drag it around but in the lake especially on the boat you can actually move around uh, to chase the fish um, you can use fairly light tackle to handle these fish so I'm pretty sure this is a boat just the way it's fighting it's quite thick yeah it's a bull trout and scooped into the net. But it's good to have a catch and release net like this because this is a catch and release fishery. I'm going to make sure all the fish are handled properly. Um, the mesh is really, really soft to handle the fish so the fish won't be damaged. So this fish is pretty happy right now. Um, we're just going to take that spoon out, hook right in the corner of the mouth. comes out like that because it's barbless hook. Um, you have to use a single barbless hook at this lake, uh, not just for easy release, but if you hook yourself, this can come up pretty easy, whereas if you have a barb hook, it'd be pretty hard to uh, get it off your flesh. So let's take a look at that fish. Okay, bull trout, nice looking bull trout. Beautiful. Let's put back in here. So this is a, uh, it's not a trout, it's a char. Um, so brook trout, bull trout, lake trout, these are all the char species. Um, so instead of having dark black dots, like a rainbow trout, these ones have uh, white spots um, along its body. And also you can see the beautiful orange pink dots as well um, along the lateral line. Beautiful. So this fish is roughly around, I would say about three pounds maybe. Yeah, about three pounds. That's that. That's a more I guess. Um, very fairly skinny. Oh, you can see the fish jumping behind us. So there's lots around. Um, fairly skinny. It's pretty thick for a bull trout, and a pretty big belly because it's been feeding on lo lots of red side shiners. So let's get this back into the water. Make a few casts. Nina's got to finish her eating so she can catch one as well. So let's get it in. Goes. You can see, no revive is needed. It's, it swims away right away because the fish was in this catch and release net the whole time. It's kept in the water um, just for easy handling. So this is a, um, again, this is a Gibbs Delta Tackle um, catch and release trout net. Telescopic, so you can collapse it. So on the boat, um, I also use this for salmon fishing as well. 
um, for coho fishing, pink salmon fishing um, in rivers. This is pretty handy. Okay, let's get back to it. I'm not sure if I should make another cast or we should wait for Nina to do this. What do you think? I don't know. I want to finish my food. You can make a more, more cast. I, I don't want to catch all the fish. So. Okay. Okay, I'm going to try again. Now Rodney caught his fish. <laughs> Oh, I'm still going to get a snack. How long do you let it sink? Because every time I let it sink, I get a snack. Hmm? Oh, a couple of seconds, right? It's pretty shallow right there. I mean, the right in front of you, there's a little trench right yeah, here. Yeah, I see it. So it's pretty shallow right there, but the fish are everywhere. I mean, they're circling I around. know, I know. Oh, yeah. Ah, he came off. Such a cheat. I was like, have fish on, and I thought it was a snack because he wasn't moving. And then when I, of course, let go a little bit, he started shaking his head, and I just saw the fish flashing, and it was off. What a cheat. Well, we were at the other spot and chucked everything we had at him, and they just didn't really commit. But they were jumping around us like crazy. So we decided to try a different spot and see if that might help. There's quite a few fish. It's not, a, not as uh, visible, not as active, but they've been biting. So hopefully. I've had two bites so far. The difference is also that, and now we're getting, oh, fish on. Can't talk. No, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Ah. Oh well. No setting hard. Enough. I know. That has always been my problem. Setting the hook. I'm too too gentle. That's it. But anyway, we switched from a one eight ounce to a one sixteenth ounce lure. And that seems to have done the trick in this case. Yellow there. This one, little guy. Night, night. What is wrong with me? Well, we have lots of fish following the lure right now, but they're not really committing. Well, the ones that commit, I lose. But it's just fun to watch them following the, the lure all the way to the boat. It's very interesting to see their behavior. Ah. See if we can keep it on. Is he? Oh, there he is. The small guy. Oh, better get the net ready. ready. Small one. And the net is stuck, and I just scared all the fish. Come on. Okay, I'll film this. This is difficult. Ooh, my first fish of the day. Pull trout. There we go. Whee! 
I'm glad that we moved spot and then we changed the size of the lure. Seems to do the trick. Let's see if we can get some more. Oh. My turn? Yeah. Okay, it's my turn now. And uh, I'll show you how it's done. This one. I can see your hook set's a little more determined than mine. Yeah, you really got to set that hook in there. Because this rod, I mean, it's an ultra light. This one. It's an ultra light tackle, right? So the rod's pretty soft. And uh, you really got to dig that hook in there for the fish. So that was the first cast. I hate you. <laughs> it's a rainbow trout, I believe. It's like a rainbow trout, well, it's hard to say. No, it's a bull trout. Ah, oh, it came off. It's a bull trout. Oh well, quick release. So I, I've seen a few big rises over there while I was filming. I just thought maybe that's where they are. There's quite a few fish feeding over there. So we kind of anchored ourselves um, at the center of all the action. It's about four, four feet deep around here and uh, we're surrounded by lots of debris, so there's, there's tree branches, there's, there's, you know, there's rocks and all that, just, and there's fish rising everywhere, um, just because there's so much structures, and the water's not very deep. I mean, not typically you wouldn't see fish in water this shallow, and the water's being so clear, you can see every single fish in the water when they get close to the, to the boat, uh, just because there's so much structures around, um, there's lots of places for them to hide and seems like feeding time there's quite a few rising um, so they're coming out from underneath the logs jumping around feeding and we see the old fish actually not the old fish many fish chasing the lure as we retrieve it I'm hoping to get a nice rainbow trout because we've, we've been getting Quite a few bull trout, and and hopefully we get some brook, uh, eastern brook trout as well, because um, I've seen quite a few rainbow trout swimming around. Be nice to get one to show to the camera, just something a little different. And that's why we kind of switched to a a one sixteen ounce uh, croc spoon instead of one eighth, because more the the rainbow trout is smaller than the bull trout, and hopefully the smaller lure will commit to it better. It's one fish. One fish sitting right here. I think that might be the one I hooked before. That's why I just kind of sitting there, slowly swimming it right. Just kind of moving around, exploring a little bit, and there's a fish. Well, I see quite a few sitting here. This is why I've been seeing it rises. Uh, nice fish. And I think I know what it is, but I'm not going to say it yet. Because this one's special. Okay. So yeah, so we've been trying out for bull trout, been trying out for rainbow trout and brook trout. And what do we catch? We catch a west slope cutthroat trout in the net. And it's pretty exciting because these are pretty rare um, in this part of the province. Uh, usually we go up to um, the Kootenai, so the southeastern BC to catch these fish. 
Um, you may have seen some of our other videos from around the area catching these with slow cutthroat trout when fly. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty, pretty unusual catching here. Okay, so let's get this fish. Ooh, what is cold. Let me show you guys. So that is a nice West Slope cutthroat trout. Beautiful. See the spotting pattern is very, very different compared to a rainbow trout. And you can see this slash on the bottom of the mouth. Let's put it back in here for one second. Beautiful fish. So let's uh, let it go so we can get back to catching another one. Okay, oops. Yeah, that's a pretty big fish. All right. And off it goes. Right to the bottom. Now that's pretty tough fishing. So we've been, we've been anchored at one, anchoring in one spot and seeing lots of fish jumping around us, just couldn't really get into commit and then finally lost our patience. I uh, moved a little bit and while we were drifting I just decided to flip out the cast and there you have it. So one fish came up and tried to grab it. So we just never know when the fish is going to bite. But that's pretty exciting. We, we, didn't, we haven't caught any rainbow trout yet and we know they're around. We've seen them. Uh, caught a few bull trout and didn't really expect the west slope cutthroat to bite and so I'm pretty happy with that. Is it my turn again? Is it? Well, that is it for today. Uh, we fished for about five hours today. Um, I thought we would have gotten more fish, but they just uh, weren't really going for it. We saw lots of fish. And I think the main reason we didn't get that many fish is because the water was so clear and it was so sunny, and the fish were pretty spooked. Um, but we did get, how many fish, how many fish you hooked? Oh, I hooked quite a few. Yeah. I only landed one, I probably hooked maybe Five? Yeah, five, five, five or six, six right? Yeah. yeah, I I had three or four, but I was behind the camera most of the time, so, so that's my excuse. But we did get two bull trout, um, one west of cutthroat, which is pretty unusual. Uh, hooked a few rainbows, but we didn't land them, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. I want to really show you guys the rainbow trout. Uh, but this is a really nice lake, and we're definitely going to come back another day and try it out. Um, yeah, but we gotta go home now and to go back to your what? <laughs> go back to your to real your life. Son. To your old son. Has to be That's dead. why our fishing time is pretty <laughs> limited. Otherwise, we would have stayed here till dark. And who knows? Maybe the fishing would have picked up. Uh, so if you wanna come out and if you wanna come out and do some freshwater fishing at lakes like this in British Columbia, uh, just make sure you get your uh, BC freshwater fishing license. It's not very expensive. Um, the annual license is less than $30 and with that you can come out come out with your boat or you can even just fish from shore for trout. Um, pretty easily done with an ultra light setup. And uh, stay tuned for more videos. Uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube, YouTube channel um, to get the most updated videos online. And uh, if you want more fishing information in British Columbia, be sure to check out our website at fishingwithrod.com. And uh, if you have any questions about this type of fishing or any other fishing questions that you have, uh, just make sure you leave a comment and I always let you answer them. Or you can always email us at info at fishingwithrod.com as well. So until next time, good luck fishing.